Well, hello everyone and welcome back to the Chateau. I thought I'd do you an extra little video this week just because we're all in lockdown and uh, I'm gonna have a go at making a cake. I mean, I'm not an expert baker, so don't take this as a proper tutorial, but we're gonna have a go at making, wait for it, a rose cake. Well, I was having a walk in the garden earlier and I noticed that, well, let me just show you, all of these roses are in bloom. Got these ones, yellow ones, pink ones. I thought, let's make a cake, flavor it with real roses and decorate it with roses as well. So here goes. I thought that I had some rose water. Well, I can't find it anywhere. And I would use the rose water to flavor the frosting. So I've picked some rose petals. Can you see those? Beautiful. And they smell amazing. So I read online that you can make your own rose water really easily. So you just need some gorgeous smelling rose petals. Now, if you're gonna do this, make sure you use organic roses that haven't had any pesticide or anything dodgy on them, really. These are from the garden, they're completely organic. Right, so I've got my rose petals, they're in a saucepan. I've added some water into there, not too much, because they will reduce down once the water starts to boil. See, there's some water there. Gentle heat on. So I'm gonna let those simmer away, and I'm gonna carry on making the cake. So the cake recipe I'm gonna make is really, really simple. You need flour, sugar, butter, and eggs, and maybe a little bit of milk. The great thing about this easy, easy cake recipe is you don't need an actual recipe. All you need is a set of scales and your ingredients. So I'll explain how you make the mixture. So first of all, you need your eggs, a bowl, and your scales. Really simple. So I'm gonna use six eggs because I'm gonna make quite a large cake. So normally you would have two sandwich tins, two slightly smaller ones. You'd make the two halves separately, but I only have this large one. So it's gonna take a bit longer to cook. And once it's done, I'm gonna to have to cut it in half to put the filling in the middle. But that's no problem. We've got all the time in the world. So first of all, you're gonna take your bowl, you're gonna put it on your scales, and you're gonna set it to zero. What you do is you put all of your eggs into the bowl. Whatever your eggs weigh, all of the rest of the ingredients weigh exactly the same. Say your eggs weigh 300 grams, your flour weighs 300 grams, your butter weighs 300 grams, and your sugar weighs 300 grams. Very simple, no recipe needed, just a pair of scales. You see it's set to zero there. So into that bowl, I'm gonna crack six eggs. Sorry, I'm having to do this one-handed, so it might be a bit messy. That's three. Four, five, six. And how much does that weigh? 314 grams. So everything else weighs 314 grams. Really simple. So into this bowl, we're gonna add 314 grams of sugar. Oh, it's a lot. Oh, well, you have to treat yourself sometimes, don't you? 314 grams of sugar. Sugar. Eggs, all weigh the same. Next, huge bag of flour. We have to buy it in bulk at the minute. 314 grams of flour. I think you get the message now, it's all the same. So I know a lot of people around the world, I know definitely in America, a lot of people use cups and tablespoons? Yeah, cups and tablespoons to measure out their ingredients. Um, so I don't know if this recipe is gonna work if you do it that way, but if you have a set of scales, you can do this. And it's really simple. Make it a complete mess here. 314 grams of flour. There it is. I've got a vintage bowl here. You can see how old it is, like it's all crackled. And I bought this from a, uh, well in England we call it a charity shop. I guess you might call it a thrift store in America or wherever you are in the world cost me one pound and I love it and I've had it for years. No need to go and buy an expensive one. So, butter, 316, do you know why it's close enough? Right, so first of all, we're gonna to need to put this oven on, otherwise our cake is not going to cook. Is that 116? Yes, 160 degrees Celsius. Oven's on, lovely. They're boiling away. Wow, look at the colour that's come out of those. 
Beautiful. The smell is amazing. Right, look at the, I just want to show you these roses. They're absolutely stunning. All picked from the garden. So we've got a sieve, but there's no handle on it. Complete shambles. Okay, I'm going to add the flour and the sugar. Now I'm going to put the baking powder in. That's one teaspoon. I'd say two in. And we're just going to sift that. So into that, I'm now going to add the butter and the eggs. Now you don't have to cream together the sugar and butter or anything like that with this mixture. It's so simple. You literally plonk everything into a bowl. So the idea is you don't mix it too much. You literally put everything in the bowl and you mix it until it's fully combined and then you stop and then that's it done. So there you go. It's all combined. Now that, it should drop off the spoon softly. There we go, to that. Just a tiny bit of milk. Maybe a bit more. There we go. And then give that a mix, just to loosen the mixture up a bit. I don't know if you can just see there, you see the cake batter, it's gone a bit sort of lumpy. Now, that is what happens when you over mix it. I didn't soften the butter enough, so it started to curdle a little bit. Now the way you rescue it, is you add a little bit of flour, one tablespoon at a time, and slowly mix it in. Ah, it's starting to look better already. Yeah, it's coming back to life. Just a little bit more flour. There we go. Rescued. Now the baking powder is starting to work. You can see the little bubbles in it. Okay, so the next stage is, let's get your cake tin and line it. So what I've done is, I cut a circle that's the same size as the base. And I also cut this strip, which is long enough to go all the way around the cake tin with a bit of overlap. I folded the bottom edge there, and with a pair of scissors, I just cut some mix in it. So when you fold it around, it fits nicely in the tin, and then your little sheet will go over the bottom. But I need to grease it first, I haven't done that. So I'll just do that quickly. There we go, lined and greased tin, perfect. So we're just gonna scoop that in. It's a good sound. If you did this with a much smaller pair of tins, you would probably cook them both in about 20 minutes. This might take about 45, but it doesn't matter. Get all of that out. Now this recipe is what you would call a classic English Victoria sponge or you might call it a Victoria sandwich. It usually comes in two halves, and in the middle you would probably put cream, whipped cream, and maybe strawberry jam or something like that. There you go, mixture's in there. Just going to smooth it out. Now I'm sure I'll probably get quite a few comments of people saying you've done it wrong. But remember, I am not a professional baker, I am just an amateur. But I enjoy it and I guess that's all that counts. So, I guess that is for me. Delicious. That's now gonna go in the middle of a preheated oven. So, I've put that in the oven. That's just gonna bake now, probably about 35 minutes to start with, just keep an eye on it, because it's quite a large cake. I don't want it to uh, be soft in the middle. After about 35 minutes, I'll put a knife into it, and if it comes out clean, it's done. If it doesn't, then it's gonna need a little bit longer. I'll see you back here in a bit, and we'll make the rose-flavoured frosting with our amazing rose water. In the meantime, let's go and see what everyone's doing outside. Titi. Bang. Good girl. Dead. So what do you think of the vlogs, Gwen? Yeah, we, we enjoy the vlogs. It's, uh, it's a bit weird to see, to see the chateau from the point of view of like somebody who doesn't know it. It's really good to watch and sometimes actually makes us look for historical information or things that we don't know ourselves. Yeah. Either because you 
research for your vlogs on because people who watch it ask us about and we don't even know. Yeah, loads of people have told us stuff about this place that I didn't even know about the, the bee emblem on the fireplace and stuff like that. I didn't get a clue. It was anything to do with Napoleon. And then we did some research and we found out it was actually given by Napoleon to a general. So that's, that's yeah. interesting. So maybe you, uh, maybe we'll see a bit more of you if you're not hiding. <laughs> it's confinement, so I'm never really dressed, or my makeup is never really done, so I just hide. <laughs> Ernest, Mama's gonna go and make you more bubble, okay? Okay, so our rose water is pretty much done. I'm gonna take that off of the heat, so you don't have to put it on ice. You can literally just take it off the heat and leave it to cool down by itself, but I want it to cool down a bit quicker. So while that's cooling down, I'm gonna make some frosting for the cake. Now it's really simple, all you use is just cream cheese, icing sugar. I'm gonna add a little bit of vanilla sugar. If you don't have vanilla sugar, you can just use vanilla essence and some of our magic rose water. Here I've put cream cheese, we're gonna add icing sugar or confectioner's sugar, whatever you call it. I'm gonna add quite a bit. I don't really weigh it, I just kind of put some in. Add the vanilla flavored sugar. I'm gonna give that a mix. So I'm gonna take some of this rose water add it to the mixture. Oh, look at the color, wow. Now, if you have pre-made rose water, it probably won't be pink like this. So you can add some food coloring. I'm probably gonna add a little bit because I think this is looking a bit too purple at the minute. So, can we taste the rose? Mmm, that's really good. I've got some natural vegetable-based food coloring which is a red, I'm gonna just add a few drops. Okay, so the cake uh, was, first of all, it was in for 35 minutes, wasn't cooked. Okay, so I've put it back in for another 10 minutes, wasn't cooked. So I've put it back in for another 10 minutes. That's gonna be 55 minutes. So please take my advice and use two cake tins when you uh, bake yours and split the mixture in half because if you do what I did and put it in a massive cake tin, it's gonna take probably an hour to cook. But no rush, we'll get it done. In the meantime, I've just put the frosting in the fridge because all of that mixing made it go a bit soft. So once that's firmed back up, that'll be ready to use to decorate the cake. And in the meantime, we're just gonna wait for this cake to finish. Once that's cooked, I'll take it out of the oven, let it cool down, take it out of the tin and then we'll cut it in half. So we get two pieces and then we can dress it. And that's the fun bit. So see you then. Okay, so the cake wasn't too bad. There's that half and that half. So what I did is I wait until it cooled down and I cut it in half and then I trimmed off all the edges and the top and the bottom so that there was no crust on it. Not too bad, nice and spongy. So what I've done is I've taken the frosting which has been in the fridge and that's chilled. And I just put a layer, a nice thick layer on the middle there of the cake. And now I'm going to Put this half on top of this half, and then I'm gonna coat the entire cake with this frosting, and then I'm gonna decorate it with the rose petals. Put this half on the top. 
Not bad. Now, I just need to put a little bit on the top first. I think they call it a crumb coat, because the first bit you put on picks up all the crumbs from the sponge. So, I need to get a little bit on first, not too much. I'm trying not to mix it with the rest of the uh, frosting. Now, I need to do the sides. So what I've done is I put it on this very thin metal disc and I'm going to leave it on that. I'm going to frost all the way down to that, all the way around the edges. And then I'm going to put it on a beautiful vintage French cake platter. Now I guess this is the easy part. Ooh, it's quite satisfying though. Let's get some on these sides then, shall we? Okay, so I'm just sprinkling a little bit of ice and sugar on it. That should just help set the frosting. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna transfer it to this beautiful vintage French plate with the beautiful turquoise edging and this little pastoral scene there with a lady and some flowers and a man serenading her with a guitar. Very romantic. So to decorate your cake, you need to take these roses. Well, you can use any type of rose, it doesn't have to be pink. It can be any color, any size. I like these ones because they've got loads and loads of petals, so you don't need to use many. What you need to do is take off these outside ones. They're usually a bit tatty. Now, rose petals are completely edible. I mean, you can eat them if you want. So what you need to do is, see around the outside of the rose, you get large petals. That's why you need more than one. So then put these ones to side, because you know them ones are slightly smaller now. I've used all the large ones from the outside. So here, once again, I've got large ones again. So I'll just keep using these large ones up. And what you're gonna have to do is go around in a circle, using the larger ones first, just like a real rose. And then once you've completed the outside edge, you want to start using the slightly smaller ones from your first rows and then just keep going around and around and then reducing the size of those petals until you're left with, well, you'll see in a minute. So your next rose petals, you want to overlap them so you don't see a join there, see? So this one will go in between those two. Just keep building up those layers. Doesn't that look like a giant rose? So these ones are really pretty because they've got quite a dark edge. So if you just dot a few of those in between, I mean, not everyone's gonna have the same roses as these. You can do this with any, imagine a yellow one with yellow roses. That would be stunning. So there you go, it's all done. It's not as difficult as you might think and it looks as good as it tastes. So now I'm gonna let everyone try some and I'll see you back here on Friday as normal for the next video. So thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye. What do you think, Gwen? Oh, it's delicious. I can really taste the rose. It's all gone now. <laughs>